and you're very welcome to this video. In this video, we're going to learn how to find the length of one of the short sides on a triangle, so not the hypotenuse, when we're given the length of one side and the angle of a triangle. So the first step we have to do in this, uh, these questions is you always find out what the opposite adjacent and hypotenuse of the triangle are, and that's what I've said here in step one. Identify the opposite adjacent and hypotenuse of the triangle. So, we know that the opposite si side, the hypotenuse, is always the side directly across from the right angle. So, we find our right angle, and we draw a line directly opposite it there, and this there is going to be our hypotenuse, so we know our hypotenuse is, or is going to be eight centimeters. Then we often need to find the, uh, the opposite side next, so we go to our angle, and we find the length of the side directly across from that. So in this case, our opposite is eight centimeters. And then our adjacent is our side between the right angle and the angle given to us in the question. So our adjacent is down here. And in this question, we don't know what the adjacent is, but that's okay, we don't need to know that. So step two then, is we need to decide if we need to use sine, cos, or tan. So we need to go back and think about what our little formula for that is. Remember a little memory aid for that? So, ka, toa. So, what that means then is sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tan is opposite over adjacent. So, let's break it down then. We have up here, we have the opposite side and we have the hypotenuse. So, what is it we're going to use? So, do we use sine? Do we have the opposite and do we have the hypotenuse? Yes, we do. So that can work. Sorry, let me take this. I'll take this in green. Do we have the adjacent? No, we don't. We have the hypotenuse, but we don't have the adjacent. So we know it's not going to be ka or cosine. And in tan, we have the opposite side. We don't have the adjacent, so it can't be tan. So our answer is going to be sine or so. So that means sine equals opposite over hypotenuse. So that's what we're going to use. Let us continue on into step three. Step three, we're going to sub in our values, sub our values into, uh, if I can spell that would be even better, into our chosen ratio. What I mean by recent ratio is, is it sine, cos, or tan? So we've picked sine here. So it's going to be sine. And what's our angle in the question? Let's zoom out there and have a look. So our angle is 32 degrees. So it's going to be sine 32 is equal to opposite is x over our hypotenuse is, so that's our x there, so we've got the opposite, and our hypotenuse, we're told, is 8. Okay, so it's x over 8. What do we do now? Well, we've got a fraction here now, and we want to get rid of the fraction, so how do we do this? Okay, well, that brings us into step 4. Okay, oh dear, did not want to do that there. Let's bring this out here like so. So step 4, get rid of the fraction. So how do I do that? How am I going to get rid of that eight from being underneath there to bring it up on top? Well, we know when it's uh, some, when we have a situation like this, where we've got the fraction sign involved, that we've got a bit of division going on there. And what's our operator that's opposite of division? It's multiplication. So I need to multiply both sides by something. What do I multiply it by? Well, I multiply it by the eight. So I multiply the left-hand side by 8, so that becomes 8 times sine 32 is equal to x over 8 multiplied by 8. Now, my two 8s here are going to cancel out, so that's going to leave me with an x down there. So I want to have now 8 sine 32, they multiply together and basically stick together like that, is equal to x. Excellent. So now that I have x completely by itself, that's happy days. So what do, do I do now? Well, then I move into step five. 
and step five is use my calculator. So literally all I do is I stick my eight sine 32, uh, that is just horrific. Uh oh, I've now got a ruler in the picture and everything, brilliant. So use my calculator, let's spell a property this time. C-A-C-U-L-A, there we go. Okie doke, so I need to put eight sine 32 into my calculator. And when I put that in, I should get a lovely long number that looks something along the lines of 4.239354114 and so on and so forth is equal to x. Now in this question, I was asked to find x correct to two decimal places. So how do I do that then? Okay, so I looked to my second and third numbers behind the decimal points. So what do I have here? So well, this is my first number, that's my second number, and that's my third. So I'm looking at my second and third numbers there. Okay, so my third number is nine. Is that above or below five? It's above five. So therefore my second number, three, is going to increase by one. So that means that I'm gonna have an answer of x is equal to 4.2. And because the nine is above five, the three becomes four. So 4.24 centimetres. And that, folks, are the five steps that I used to follow to find the length of a missing side of a triangle. If you have any questions about this video, I'll ask below in the comments. And if you liked it or enjoyed it, give it a like. And of course, why not subscribe to the channel? Thanks very much for watching, folks. See you in the next video. Bye now.